Hey, everybody, how are you? Good. Good. Now, you all look a little tired today. And we can't be tired today. Eric says he's really tired, and so if anyone sees him nodding off, you make sure you just go back and smack him upside the head and wake him up, all right? In fact, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to have to do to, to wake you up because we're going to have a lot of fun, but you've all got to participate. So I'm going to, I'm going to just try something right now. I want all of you to stand on up. This has got nothing to do with a sermon. This is just sort of a wake-up thing, all right? Okay, can you see me? All right, let me get up a little higher. Okay, this, this is just sort of a weird, weird thing it, we used to do with youth groups, okay? And so I just want you to get, get all revved on up. And so this is what I want you to do. When I take my hands and, and go like this, once I cross them, once I cross, I want you to clap, all right? Okay, let's try it. Okay. All right, you're doing good. Now, there are going to be times they're going to fake you out. I'm not really even going to cross them. And then you try not to clap, all right? And so it's not, not easy. I'm giving you a humongous challenge. All right, that's right. Oh. All right, let's try again. Oh, you're pretty good at that one. All right, let's do it. Let's try it again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, you can sit down. All right, we're going to go through the Old Testament. We're going to have a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Can you slap Eric now? Yeah, that would be fun. And, you know, talk about having fun. He's been, you know, you know him, how excited he gets. Yeah, and so, you know, this week I was telling about this Old Testament walkthrough, and he was, he was so excited. He was jumping up and down and with like a little schoolgirl out here in the hallway. And so that's, that's our buddy back there, Glenn. Boy, he was having a good time. All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make this sort of a fun, participatory zoom through the entire Old Testament. And so we're going to cover the whole thing today. Obviously not every verse, just sort of the movement through the Old Testament. And so this is called a zoom through. And, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to uh, have times when you participate, other times when you're part of our living Old Testament map. Some of you are going to be specific locations. But I just want you to be ready to participate. So if I ask a question, I just want you to feel free to just sort of shout out and have fun. For example, how many books are in the whole Bible? Okay, that, some of you knew it. Now all of you do. It's 66. So let me ask again. How many books are in the Old Testament? 66. Excellent. Okay. Now we're going to also throw in some like memory cues. Uh, Like for example, how many books are in the Old Testament? All right. Let's let's give you a, a memory idea so you can remember this in the future. Okay. First of all, old. How many letters are there? Testament. How many letters are there? Go ahead, use your fingers. Count them out. Nine. Okay, so how many is it? 39. Okay, now let's go to the New Testament. How many, how many letters are in the word new? Okay, now how many letters are in Testament? But the New Testament is sort of talking about the multiplying of disciples, and so we're going to use multiplication this time. So three times nine is? 27. How many books are in the Old Testament? How many books are in the New Testament? And how many all together? Oh, you guys are so good. You are so good. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our auditorium here. We're going to turn it into the map, the Old Testament map. And so here you've got it up there on the screen. Okay, now the map is all set. And... uh, and let me see if I can get my notes up again, seeing it just disappeared. I love using a phone for notes. It always likes to disappear on me. Yeah. It's going to sleep like us. Yeah, it's going to sleep like you. All right. All right. Now I think we're set. All right. What I'm going to give you today, when you leave the church, is you're going to get your own notebook. And in that notebook is, is a book written by a former professor of the Bible at Columbia University, uh, Columbia Baptist Bible University. And it's uh, just a phenomenal book, and it's got content, and it's also got a lot of discussion questions in it. 
I urge every single one of you to take it. And you can do it in two ways. You can go ahead and you can do it individually for yourselves, and I'd urge you to do it before you come every single week. The second way that you can use it is in a small group. At the end of the service, Eric is going to come on up, and he's going to tell us a little bit about some of the small groups that are available. And so you can participate using that in a small group. But in that particular book, you're going to discover that we're going to look at 10 periods or chapters of the Old Testament story. And they are these. Beginnings, patriarchs, exodus, settlement, judges, united kingdom, divided kingdom, captivity, restoration, and a 400-year period that we call silence. And so we're going to get used to those. You can see it up on the map. Beginnings, patriarchs, exodus, settlement, judges, united kingdom, divided kingdom, captivity, restoration, and silence. Today we're going to zoom through all of them. And when you come back next week, then we're going to start looking at beginnings. We're going to give a more close look at that particular side. But today we're going to start with that first one, and the first one is beginnings. And that's from creation to Abraham. So here's where I want you to participate with me. Uh, Genesis 1 and 2 is creation. Say it. Genesis chapter 3 is the fall. Genesis chapter 4 is Cain kills Abel. Chapters 5 and 10 is family trees or genealogies. Chapter 6 through 8 is the flood. Blah, 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 blah. What is it? And chapter 11 is the Tower of Babel. Uh, oh, yes, I missed nine. Thank you very much. Nine is the promise of the rainbow. Okay, now let's, some of you caught it, we're going to go through it until everyone in the room is saying it, okay? That's our goal, everyone in the room. So Genesis 1 and 2, Creation. Genesis chapter 3, Law. chapter 4, Law. 5 and 10, Law. 6 through 8, Law. chapter 9, Law. promise of the rainbow, chapter 11, all right. Okay, let's 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 move back aside so they cannot see it. No, 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 leave it up there. Nope. <laughs> move back aside so they cannot see it. All right. Now we can do it just totally from memory, okay? Genesis 1 and 2. Creation. Genesis chapter 3. The fall. Genesis chapter 4. Angels. Genesis chapter 5 and 10. Angels. Genesis 6 through 8. Angels. Genesis chapter 9. Promise of the rainbow, Genesis chapter 11, Tower of Babel. Excellent. Now you can go to that next slide again. All right. And so that takes us through a period that we call beginnings. Uh, now, we're, now we're going to go on to patriarchs. And that brings us to the first patriarch, and that was Abraham. And this period goes from Abraham all the way through to Moses. And so we start off with him, and we discover that Abraham is born down in Ur of Chaldees. Now where's Ur? Who's got Ur? There he is. So there he is, born back in Ur of Chaldees. So that's where we see him, and you can see him on the map in the yellow thing. And there in Ur of Chaldees, God comes and he directs Moses to, to move on, and he gives him eventually what's going to be called the Abrahamic Covenant. But here he's at Ur of Chaldees, and so four key people leave Ur of Chaldees. I mean, all their household and their servants and everyone else goes. But those four people are Abraham, Sarah, Terah, and Lot. Say that with me. Abraham, Sarah, Terah, and Lot. Now, Sarah is Abraham's wife. Terah is Abraham's father. And Lot is Abraham's nephew. All right? So what are their names? Abraham, Sarah, Terah, and Lot. And so they got through the Fertile Crescent all the way to Haran. Where's Haran? Wave your sign, fellas. Haran. And so they come up here to Haran, and so they are there in Haran for about 20 to 30 years, during which time he becomes very, very wealthy. His, his flocks and, and everything just uh, reproduce, and they're doing phenomenal. And so they are there for 20 to 30 years, and then God directs him to go further on. And so he goes uh, to the land of Canaan, the promised land. And so let's go over to there. 
Now, at this point, Terah stays behind and dies. So who does that leave? Abraham, Sarah, and Lot. And so that whole area where Debbie is and that wall over there, we're going to call Canaan. If you go further there, we'll make the wall actually the Mediterranean Sea, all right? And so there it is over there. And so they are there. And so that's where he is. And there God gives Abraham a wonderful promise, a covenant that is made between him and his people. And he promises them three, three, three things, LSB, and that is land, seed, and blessing. Say that with me. Land, seed, and blessing. Abraham has two sons, I and I, Isaac and Ishmael. What are they? Isaac and Ishmael. Isaac has two sons, J and E. Their names are Jacob and Esau. Jacob has 12 sons and one daughter. Now, what do you think her name is? Dinah. Just remember it like this. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. All right, the 12 sons get down to the youngest ones, and the youngest child, the baby boy, the little one, is Benjamin. So that's little Benjamin. And the second one is Joseph, little Joe. Can you picture him riding his horse out on the Ponderosa? All right, little Joe, Joseph. All right, so that's the two of them, all right? And so there they are, and they're living there in Canaan. And then the other brothers get jealous of Joseph, and so they sell him into slavery. And he ends up going to Egypt. Where's Egypt? Oh, he's way back there in Egypt. Feel free to turn around and stare at Eric. All right. Okay, he's still awake? Well, like your practice is smacking him upside the head, so you won't have any problem doing that. All right, so he's back there in Egypt, and, uh, and there he's in Egypt, and that brings us to the third period, and that is the period of the Exodus. Now he's there for, well, the people of Israel are there for 430 years. He goes first of all, and then there's a drought back in Canaan. And so his brothers come and the whole family moves there. And they're there for 430 years. While he's still alive, they live in prosperity. But once he dies, they go into slavery. And the people are there for 430 years. All right? Okay, everybody up with me so far? then the best way to remember this is by repetition. So let's go back to the beginning. So we've got the beginnings, all right? Genesis 1 and 2 is? Creation. Genesis chapter 3. Whoa. Genesis chapter 4. Creation. Genesis 5 and 10. Creation. Genesis chapter 6 through 8. Whoa. Genesis chapter 9. Creation. Promise of the rainbow. Chapter 11, Tower of Babel. Then we get to the patriarchs. The first patriarch is? Abraham. Where is he born? Ur. Ur. Ur of Chaldees. Four people leave Ur of Chaldees. Who are they? Abraham, Sarah, Terah, and Lot. And so they go where? All the way up here to Haran. God makes him very rich, but three people leave there. What are their names? Abraham, and where do they go? They go to Canaan. And there God gives him the Abrahamic covenant, which consists of three things. LSB, seed and blessing. Let's say it again. Land, seed, and blessing. Abraham has two sons. What are their names? Isaac and Ishmael. Isaac has two sons, J and E. What are their names? Jacob has how many sons? How many daughters? What's her name? What's the youngest boy? What's the second one? Sold into slavery where? And he's there for how many years, he and all his family? 430. How many years in, in, in riches? 30. How many years in slavery? 400. And they are there. And now at this point, we come to that period called the Exodus, and God sends a great deliverer. We know that Moses is up there. He's wandering around the wilderness because he's been chased out of Egypt. And then there's a burning fire. And God comes to him and he says, Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. If you ever wondered what God sounds like, just like that. 
And of course, you know what happens. Moses argues with him a little bit. Finally, he goes on down. And so he goes down to Pharaoh and he says, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, no. And so he slaps a plague on him. And so he says, now again, uh, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, so he slaps another plague on him. So he says, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, no. And he slaps another plague on him. How many plagues altogether? Ten plagues. Can anyone mention any of the plagues? The frogs, flies, COVID virus, did I hear? All right, all these, until the very last one. What was the last big trial that they had? What? Death of the firstborn. And, uh, and after they do that one, which is what we celebrate, what the people of God have celebrated as a Passover, uh, he finally says, Go. All right, And so they cross the Red Sea. Where's that Red Sea? There it is, Dale's Red Sea. So they cross the Red Sea. Are you, I think you would keep going forward there. Okay, so they cross that Red Sea, and they get across the Red Sea. They take a hard right turn, and they get to Mount Sinai. All right, there it is. There's Mount Sinai. And there at Mount Sinai, God gives them the law and the plans for the tabernacle. Now, the law consists of like the Ten Commandments and other things. Just curious with the Ten Commandments, can anyone mention any of the Ten Commandments? Love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind. Another one? Uh, shall not kill? Covet? Sabbath? Honor your father and mother? Don't lie? All right. Has anyone ever kept all ten of them? Why did God give a bunch of laws that we couldn't keep? You ever think about that? Yeah, it shows us we're sinners in need of a Savior. And of course, that comes to the New Testament. So he gives them the law and the plans for the tabernacle. And then they head up to a beautiful oasis in the desert. Where is Kadesh Barnea? Oh, you're so beautiful. The beautiful oasis in the desert, Kadesh Barnea. And so they are there, and now God sends spies into the land. So how many spies did he send back into the land? Twelve spies. And ten came back and said, No way, Mose, we're not going into the land. And, and two say, Yes, because God says to go. Sort of shows us this. The majority isn't always right. The people that are on God's side are always in the right. And so as a result of saying no, they wander around the wilderness. And you can see that sort of that whole wilderness around, around there from Kadesh Barnea onward. And they wander around the wilderness for 40 years, during which all the people that had the part in making that decision pass away and die. All right? And so, uh, and so now we, we find them coming to the next area. So we've started with beginnings, and then we looked at the patriarchs, and then we looked at the exodus. And now we're going to call this next period uh, settlements or conquests. And so during this time of wandering around, you, you, you find them wandering around, but you also find that uh, the five books, the five sermons that, that uh, Moses preaches at the very end of his ministry, I put into the book of Deuteronomy, and he, he gives the law, and he spells it all on out, and you find that in Leviticus, you find all that. But now, he dies, and a new military leader, his right-hand man, takes his place, and his name is Joshua. Joshua. And so, he says, go take the land, and this time the people don't say no, they say, okay, let's go. And so, they come to this river that's going from, where's, where's the Red Sea? All right, there's the Red Sea. Okay, where's, where's the Dead Sea? All right, where's the Sea of Galilee? All right. Uh, sea of Galilee is where? All right. Okay, now between those two, the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee, there's a river that runs, okay? And that river that runs between them is, is called, called what? Jordan River. And so they're in the Jordan River. This is during the flood time of year, and so the water is really high. And so God does another miracle. When they cross the Red Sea, he, he stopped up the water so that it was like a wall on both sides. This time he just sort of stops it on one side and lets it drain up, and the people go across, all right? And so the first thing they come to is the capital of Canaan, and that's Jericho, all right? Jericho. Thank you, Jericho. And, uh, and so they come to Jericho, and their, their means of capturing the city is just incredible 
because instead of pulling out all their bows and arrows and everything else, you just march around the city. All right, there they go around the city. And, and they march around once a day for six days. All right, and then they come to the seventh day, they march around it seven times. And, uh, and the priests blow their trumpets and all the people shout. And what happened to the walls? Jessica, can you sort of fall down a little bit there? Oh, excellent. All right. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, everyone. And the walls came a-tumbling down. All right. It's an incredible miracle. And so now they get all excited because they say, well, this is going to be a piece of cake. And so they go to, a, to another little town that's not far away, and they go up to capture it. And it's, it's AI. All right. Phyllis, how do you think that's spelled? AI? No, don't, don't pronounce it. Spell it. Yeah, you're right. It's AI. All right. And so they're an AI. They lose that battle. Why? Because one man in their crowd disobeyed God, and he took some of the loot and hid it underneath his tent. And he is a, he is a, 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 a painful guy. I mean, he had arthritis. They call him Aiken. All right. And, uh, and so their Aiken is, because of his sin, they all lost. It sort of shows us even with our church, the sin of one can affect the whole. All right? So they repent of their sin. Uh, uh, punishment is meted out, out. And now they go further. And so now they head across the land and they capture everything right through the middle of the land. And then they go and they go south and they capture all that territory. And then they go north and they capture all of that area. And so that's all the conquest. And after they've captured it, not quite all of it. They were supposed to capture it all, but especially in the north, they didn't quite follow God's commandment completely. And that would cause fits from that day on out. And so they captured most of it. And then they set up all their people in different areas. And so 12 tribes, and so 12 different regions in the country, in, in essence, were set it up. And so they had their settlements. And so that brings us to the end of that period that we call settlements. All right? And so Joshua passes away, and now we've got a brand new period, and it's called Judges. All right? And so the Judges is a 400-year period that's full of anarchy. It's full of ups and downs. Uh, can anybody name any of the Judges? Samson, Samson was a judge. Deborah. Deborah was a judge. Jehu, Jehu was a judge. Gideon? Yeah, Samuel was the last official judge and the first official prophet. Now we call that anarchy because they had seven cycles of, of, of sin, failure, and deliverance. In fact, they had sin, they would have supplication as they cried out to God for help. Uh, uh, oh no, there would be sin, there would be suffering, there would be supplication, and then there would be saving. Okay, the, the four phases to it. So they had sin, they had suffer, get bad, and so then they had cry out to God for help, supplication, and then there would be salvation. And they just sort of spun through that cycle seven different times. And that took us through the whole 400 years of, of judges. All right. So the last judge and the first prophet is? Samuel. Samuel. All right, and so that brings in the next period, and now they select a king. And so this is a period that we call the United Kingdom, where they're all together. And so Saul, Samuel goes and anoints the first king. And what was his name? Saul. Everyone? Saul. And then the second king is? David. Everyone? David. Third king is? Solomon. Solomon. Everyone? Solomon. All right, let's go through them again. There's Saul. David, Solomon, and then that's the end of the United Kingdom. And boom, there's an explosion under his son Jeroboam. All right? Uh, actually, Rehoboam, I'm sorry. Uh, but his opponent was Jeroboam. I mean, they had the big 2020 election back then, and there's two guys running against each other, Jeroboam and Rehoboam, and, uh, and it caused a civil war in the land, and the issues, like always, there's taxes <laughs> and other things like that. But the result was the kingdom is split in two. So there's the ten tribes in the north, and then there's the two tribes in the south, uh, Benjamin and Judah, and they went by the name of the biggest tribe in the south, and so does Judah. So they called it the northern kingdom of Israel, and the southern uh, 
kingdom of Judah. All right? And uh, as you look at the history of that divided kingdom, well, you've got uh, about 20 kings in the north and about 20 kings in the south. All the kings in the north are bad, uh, but some of the kings in the south were, were, were good, but the majority were bad too. It doesn't mean there weren't any great things that happened. There was about four or five major revivals that happened during that period in the south, but never happened in the north. In spite of having great prophets like Elijah and others, the, the northern kingdom was just, just spiritually a mess. And so as a result, they were allowed by God to be captured. And so they were captured by Assyria. Where's Assyria? Well, okay, thanks, Claire. All right, so they're captured by Assyria, and so now they're dragged away, and they're brought to Assyria. And frankly, they just sort of disappeared. I mean, the northern tribes, I think God knows where they all are spread out, but they just sort of became the disappearing people. All right, so that happened like in the year 722 B.C. Remember when you're going backwards in time, you start with Christ and you work your way backwards, so it's, you know, it's, it works that way, so 722 B.C. And, uh, and so then about 150 years later, the southern kingdom falls into sin too, and so they are then allowed to be captured, and they are captured by Babylon. Where's Babylon? All right, thanks, Jackson. Jenny, you tuck your brother into doing it. You are so, so convincing. And so, and so, yeah, and so they're captured by Babylon. And so now the southern people, you know, are brought over there, and so many of them go. Uh, can you, any of you think of Daniel and his three companions? What are their names? Yeah, they were like the first expedition to be taken up there. And then there's other crews are brought up after that. But altogether, the exile there lasted about 70 years, all right? Which was totally forecast before it ever happened by one of the prophets who said that it was only going to last 70 years. And then they were going to be allowed to return to Israel. And so they're up there, and then they come down to that last period, and they're allowed to go back to Israel. And so they go back with like three expeditions. All right. The first one is led by Zerubbabel. And the second one is led by uh, Ezra. And the third one is led by Nehemiah. And so under Ezra and Zerubbabel, they go on back and they, they, they re start the city to some degree and they, they get the temple worship going and they rebuild the temple. And then when Nehemiah comes through, he comes and he, he takes the wall and he restores the wall and the gates. And then he repopulates the city and gets that sort of fixed on up. And then they have a major revival. And you come to the end of that and, uh, and he dies and the Old Testament is over. And then there's a 400 year period between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so what I've really done, folks, is I just took you through the whole Old Testament. You did it. Let's do it again. All right? Uh, because what would happen if I walked up to you on the sidewalk this week and asked you to repeat any of this? You would say, that is a piece of cake, Ron. And you'd be able to just sort of give it to me, just like that. Right? No, the head goes this way. All right. All right, let's go ahead. Okay, so we go back to the beginning. So Genesis 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 4. Chapter 5 and 10. Family trees. Chapter 6 through 8. Genesis chapter 9. Promise of the rainbow. Genesis chapter 11. Tower of Babel. Second period, patriarchs. We start off with Abraham. Where is Abraham born? Ur. And, uh, and four people leave Ur. Abraham, Sarah, Terah, and Lot. And so they come all the way over to Haran. And there at Haran, uh, they live for about 20, 30 years, and Terah dies. And so who is left? Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah Lot go to, to, to uh, Canaan, which is now the promised land will be Israel. And there God gives Abraham the Abrahamic covenant, found Genesis 11 and 12. And there in the Abrahamic covenant, he promises them three things, LSB, and they are seed and blessing. And Abraham has two sons. What are their names? Isaac has two sons. What are their names? Jacob has how many sons? How many daughters? What's the youngest, uh, what's the youngest son? 
Who was the second youngest? Little Joe. Little Joe. He sold into slavery to where? Egypt. Egypt. The people of Israel live in Egypt for how many years? 430. 30 years in prosperity, 400 years in slavery. God sends a great deliverer. His name is Moses. Moses says to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh says, oh, you're good at saying that. <laughs> you practice that one a lot? Does he practice that one? Oh, he does. All right. All right. Uh, so he says no. And so God slaps him down with how many plagues? Ten. Finally, after the last plague, he says go. So they cross which sea? The Red Sea. And they take a right-hand turn and they go down to Mount Sinai. God gives them two things. What are they? The law and the plans for the tabernacle. We need to practice that one. He gives them two things. What are they? The law and the plans for the tabernacle. And then they go up this beautiful oasis in the desert, Kadesh Barnea, and there they are told to go into, into Canaan and take it. So they send how many spies? And uh, 10 come back and say, no way, Mose. And two say, let's do it. And they listen to the wrong people. They wander around the wilderness for how many years? All right, now they come on up to this mountainside, just sort of on this side of, of uh, the Jordan River, and they look on down. Moses dies, preaches his five sermons, and, and, uh, Jer and uh, Joshua takes on over. So they cross what water? Jordan River that's right between the Dead Sea and the Red Sea. Not the Red Sea, the Sea of Galilee. They cross it, and they come to what, what town? Jericho. They march around it for how many days? Seven days. And the seventh day, what happened to the walls? They all come a-tumbling down. All right, they go on up to Ai. How's that spelled? Oh, you got it. All right. <laughs> uh, Ai. And, uh, and, of course, they lose there. But after they lose, they uh, then go across the, the land. They capture the south. They capture the north. They resettle it in the 12 different tribes. And we reach the end of the period of the judges, which then brings us to the next period, and that is the... United Kingdom. And in the United Kingdom, uh, we've got three kings. What are their names? Saul, David, Solomon. Say it again. Saul, David, and Solomon. And then what happens then? There's a split. All right. And, uh, and so now it becomes the United, divided kingdom. And uh, it, it lasts for years. But the northern tribe is carried away in the year 722 B.C. And they're carried away to what country? Assyria. Assyria. All right. Carried away to Assyria in 722. 150 years later in 586, the southern kingdom is carried away to where? Babylon. And uh, they are there for how many years altogether in their exile? 70. And then they are allowed to return back to Israel. And uh, in three leaders, Zerubbabel and and Nehemiah. All right. And so now, I don't know, can you see those small words up there? Uh, some of you can see it, some can't. Here are the episodes in that far left. Beginnings, Patriarchs, Exodus, Settlement, Judges, United Kingdom, Divided Kingdom, Captivity, Restoration, and Silence. Those are different periods. Now let me just show you how the history works into it. There are three kinds of books in the Old Testament. There's history books, poetry books, and prophecy books. Now, among those history books, there are 11 that move the story along. There are some others that have what I like to call stationary history. That is, it tells history, but it doesn't really move the storyline along. It just sort of tells sort of the history of what happens during that period. And so the, the 11 that move it along are Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Joshua, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st Kings, 1st... Uh, Second Kings, Ezra, and Nehemiah. The, state, the other ones that sort of fit underneath, like underneath Exodus, that's Leviticus, where they sort of give the law. And then underneath Numbers would have Deuteronomy, that's, that's his five sermons. And under Judges, that's where the story of Ruth occurs, okay? Uh, under Second, when he gets to First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings, you say, what are the difference? Well, both of those are history times, but First and Second Kings is told from a political perspective, and First and Second Chronicles is told more from a priestly perspective. And so First, first Samuel uh, basically uh, talks more about, about what happens in, right through the reign of David. 
And, uh, and then 2 Samuel talks more about what happens under Solomon. Okay? And so 1 Chronicles sort of tells us the same history from a priestly perspective as, as 2 Samuel. Uh, and you got 1 Kings and 2 Kings, and 2 Chronicles sort of tells what happens during that period under 2 Kings. All right? And then under Ezra down there at the end, you get uh, the story of Esther. And so when you read through your Bible, you just need to know that the books aren't given chronological. Because if you look at your, your, your index, you got Ezra and Nehemiah towards the front of the Bible. But history-wise, they're like at the end of the Bible, okay? If you just take it history, history-wise in the Old Testament. And so you got Ezra and Nehemiah. Different poetry books. Well, Job was written probably during that period of Genesis, and, uh, and then you got Psalms, and of course that sort of tells the story of, uh, well, most of them were written by David, and so that would fit under, I guess, Second Samuel, which, which I correctly, incorrectly said before. That's sort of more about David's life. Okay, Second Samuel is more about David's life. And then, and then you got uh, First Kings, and that sort of describes Solomon, and so what books did he write? Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. And then you got the prophecy books, and there's a whole bunch of them. There's the major prophets and the minor prophets. But if you look at the divided kingdom, Hosea and Amos sort of ministered to Israel during the time of the divided kingdom. Down in the south in Judah, you've got some other prophets, Habakkuk, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Joel, Micah, Zephaniah. Lamentations is there uh, because it was written by Jeremiah, so it fits in there. And so that's written to, to Judah. And then Jonah and Nahum actually uh, wrote prophecy books aimed at Assyria. And Obadiah did one to Edom. And people argue a little bit, does Obadiah fit under the divided kingdom or did he speak down below during the captivity? Uh, but definitely Daniel and Ezekiel was during those 70 years of captivity. And then there is the restoration. You got Haggai and Zechariah and they're ministering during the time of Ezra. And Malachi is ministering during the time of uh, of Nehemiah, and then you've got the 400-year period of silence. And what can I say about that? Yeah, nothing. And so we've gone through the Old Testament. 